Welcome, brave souls, to a journey through the chilling cold of winter nights filled with unspeakable horrors. As you wrap yourselves in the warmth of your cozy blankets, we are about to venture into the icy darkness of the unknown, where the only company one might have is the eerie silence of the night, punctuated by the howling winds of winter. Here, we will explore three chilling tales of solitary winter nights, each brimming with suspense and the uncanny. Each of these tales is a testament to the solitude and fear that can grip a person when they're all alone in the bone-chilling cold, with nothing but their thoughts and the inexplicable happenings around them. The stories are set against the backdrop of frigid winter nights, when the line between reality and imagination can blur, leading to experiences that are truly terrifying. Prepare yourselves as we delve into the first of our three chilling tales. Our first chilling tale begins on a quiet, snowy winter's night, in a small, secluded town where the only sound you'd hear was the wind whispering secrets to the trees. A chilling story was about to unfold. The town was draped in a thick blanket of white, with the snowflakes gently falling, each one unique, each one a silent harbinger of the haunting that was to come. The protagonist of our story, let's call him John, was an outsider who had recently moved to this town. An adventurous soul, he decided to take a late-night stroll in the snow-covered landscape, unaware of the eerie events that were about to transpire. As he walked, the crunch of his boots on the fresh snow was the only sound that dared to break the silent serenity of the winter night. Suddenly, he noticed something strange. He could see his footprints in the snow, but there was another set of footprints right beside his. Footprints that seemed to appear out of nowhere. He looked around, but there was no one in sight. A shiver ran down his spine, not from the cold, but from a creeping sense of dread. As he continued his walk, the second set of footprints kept pace with him, always there, always following. He quickened his pace, and so did the footprints. He stopped, and so did they. The snow around him seemed to grow colder, the night darker. He was alone, yet he felt an unseen presence, a silent companion in the snow. In a desperate attempt to escape, John ran towards his house. But the closer he got to safety, the more intense his fear became. The footprints were still there, growing deeper, more pronounced. It was as if the unseen entity was closing in on him. Finally, he reached his house and slammed the door shut, leaving the haunting presence outside. He thought he was safe, but as he looked down, he saw the footprints now inside his house, leading towards him. The haunting had followed him home. And so the first night ends, leaving you to ponder what could possibly happen next. As the frost creeps in, we journey into the second night of our chilling tales. The moon is high, casting long, eerie shadows that seem to dance in the icy wind. The frost clings to the windows, each intricate design an icy testament to the horror that is about to unfold. On this winter night, we find ourselves in a small isolated cabin nestled deep within the forest. The cabin, though modest, is warm and inviting, a stark contrast to the biting cold outside. But as the night progresses, the warm glow of the hearth can do little to dispel the growing sense of dread. A solitary figure, let's call him Michael, is our sole occupant for the evening. He's a city dweller, unaccustomed to the solitude and eerie silence of the wilderness. The night is still, the only sound being the crackling fire and the distant hooting of an owl. But as the hours tick on, a new sound punctures the silence, a soft, almost inaudible scratching at the cabin door. Michael, initially dismissing it as the wind or perhaps a small animal, soon realizes the scratching is deliberate rhythmic. His heart pounding, he gathers the courage to investigate. As he inches towards the door, the scratching intensifies, becoming a frantic, desperate clawing. Opening the door reveals nothing but the frost-covered landscape bathed in moonlight. The stillness is deafening, the scratching now a distant memory. But as he turns to retreat back inside, a chilling sight stops him in his tracks. There, in the frost on the window, is the unmistakable shadow of a figure its form distorted and grotesque. 
Michael's blood runs cold as he realizes he is not alone. The shadow figure seems to watch him, its form shifting with the flickering firelight. His mind races, fear gripping him as he realizes the true horror of his situation. He's trapped, alone in the wilderness with an unseen entity. As dawn breaks, the shadowy figure disappears, leaving no trace of its menacing presence. The scratching, the figure, all just shadows in the frost. And as Michael breathes a sigh of relief, he can't shake the unsettling feeling that he's still being watched. Another night concludes, leaving you to wonder about the final, chilling tale. Will it bring relief or escalate the terror? Only the whispers of the wind hold the answer. Our final tale takes us into the depths of a winter's night, where the wind carries whispers of the unknown. As the icy chill of the evening settles in, every rustle and whisper of the wind seems to carry a secret. A secret, perhaps, not meant for human ears. This is the story of an ordinary man living in an ordinary town under extraordinary circumstances. His name was Liam. Liam was known for his solitude. A recluse by choice, he found solace in the silence of his quaint little cottage nestled in the heart of the wintry woods. One night, as the moon hung high in the night sky, casting long eerie shadows, Liam was visited by the whispers. It started as an indistinct hum, a mere murmur riding on the bellowing wind. Liam, dismissing it as the wind playing tricks, paid it no heed. But as the night grew darker, the whispers grew louder, more distinct. It was a voice, a voice that seemed to echo from an age-long past, a voice that carried a tale of sorrow and despair. The voice spoke of a lost love, a life cut short and a promise unfulfilled. The voice told of a young maiden, her life snuffed out in the prime of her youth, her spirit trapped in the wintry wilderness, longing for release. As the voice recounted its tale, Liam felt a chill that had nothing to do with the winter's cold. He found himself moved by the tale of the lost maiden. As the night wore on, the voice grew desperate, pleading for release, pleading for peace. Liam, driven by an inexplicable urge, decided to help. The climax of our tale is perhaps as chilling as the winter's night itself. Guided by the whispers, Liam found himself standing in front of an old, forgotten grave, the resting place of the lost maiden. In a twist of fate, Liam was the key, the promise the spirit had been waiting for. With a simple act of acknowledgement and a promise to remember, Liam set the maiden's spirit free. The wind carried one last whisper that night, a whisper of gratitude, a whisper of farewell, as the spirit of the maiden finally found peace. And so, our journey through the chilling winter nights concludes. We have walked through the chilling cold, braved the shadows, and listened to the whispers of the night. Together, we've journeyed through three winter nights, each darker and colder than the last, each carrying its own unique brand of horror and suspense. Our first tale, A Haunting in the Snow, took us into a world of seemingly endless white, where the beauty of the snow concealed a haunting presence. The stark contrast between the peaceful snowfall and the chilling apparition was designed to unsettle, to make the familiar suddenly unfamiliar. The silence of the snowfall only amplified the sense of dread, creating a suspenseful atmosphere that lingered long after the story ended. Next, we ventured into Shadows in the Frost, a tale where the frost wasn't the only thing that sent shivers down our spines. The shadows that danced on the icy canvas were more than mere illusions. They were silent spectators, adding an eerie layer to the frosty landscape. Each shadow was a character, each movement a new chapter in our horror story. The uncertainty, the constant anticipation of what the shadows would reveal next, built a suspense that gripped us and refused to let go. Finally, we found ourselves caught in the whispers in the wind, where the wind carried more than just the chill of winter. The whispers that weaved through the howling wind were not just figments of our imagination. They were echoes from the past, resonating with an unnerving frequency, becoming more than just sounds. They were voices, voices that told tales of horror that seemed to echo from every direction, 
adding a chilling symphony to our winter night. Each of these stories was crafted to build upon the suspense and horror of the previous one, creating a crescendo of terror that climaxed in the final tale. Each story was a chilling reminder that horror can lurk in the most unexpected places, even in the serene beauty of a winter night. Which of these chilling tales did you find the most terrifying? Do you have any chilling stories of your own to share? We are eager to hear from you.